Well, we down here in the Ottawa Hall looking for some deer meat. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I don't know. And I wanted to go hunting, but damn Paul, he took me out. <laughs> damn teeth, man. <laughs> trying to hold it together here, but Paul, he's he said, have you seen, have you seen my sister? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want some dairy meat. Maybe some back strap or something. <laughs> <laughs> this is for you, Big George. We're Dude. missing you down here. Woo woo! <laughs> some anchor in the back. It keeps the boat from uh, drifting left and right. And we got an anchor in the front. We got two people fishing on the boat. So we're going to be fishing two rods heavy left. Two rods heavy right. This one will be going shallow. This will be fished on the shelf. This will be going deep. And the one here to the right will go directly below the boat. Name of the game is time. Flathead catfishing is some of the toughest catfishing that, that you can do. It's not fast paced like channel catfish or blue catfish. There are nights where you can get into 10 or 15, uh, 10 or 15 fish. To get your bait out of the bait well, you can either use your hands or you can use a dip net. One thing to be conscious of in the summer months when the bugs are really bad is a lot of people will use bug juice on and around their body and on their clothes and if you introduce that bug juice into your to your bait tank it can have a negative impact on your bait we like to use just a real small dip net we're going to look inside and we're going to select a decent sized goldfish goldfish are really really hardy baits all you're gonna do, I like to use a sickle hook and right back towards right back towards the tail on the meaty portion on the meaty portion of the goldfish, you're gonna just remove a few scales. You're gonna take your hook and insert it quickly, push it through, take the scale off the end of the hook point, and he's ready to do some business. Put him in the water. Let that vibration be a dinner bell to any big flatheads that might be coming into the area looking for an easy bait. Just going to gently place them out about 30 feet, 30 feet away from the boat on that ledge we were talking about. Just going to gently lob him out there. I don't want to power cast him because I don't want to power cast my bait and stun him. Let it fall to the bottom with braid. You can feel when that no rope seeker touches the bottom. Raise it a couple times, make sure you're not snagged. Put it in your monster rod holder. I'm gonna set my line out alarm. We're ready for business, it's a waiting game now. He's on there, I think he just, I think I'm snagged, dude. I'm either snagged or he's a hoss. Here he comes. Here he comes. It's hard to tell. I mean, he, he has some, he definitely has some ass behind him. Yeah, I had him snap, but he's not as big as what I thought he was. As big as what I thought he was. Let me go ahead. I like these. I like these by Wild Wolf Products. These ones are glowing in the dark. Let's see what we got here. That poor old boy. Top fin is scraped. He's definitely making some noise. Not bad. Let's go ahead and let him go. You see the line burn. Top his back. Multiple burns. Somebody's been tearing this forward fish up. Hmm. 
I let him go. Yeah, I felt it. The line moved about four feet, and I put my put my finger on the braid just to try to get get an idea of what's going on below the water. And I felt some heavy pressure, but just when I was getting ready to set that hook, it released. I don't know if he still got it. I'm not feeling I'm not feeling hardly any pressure on the line. 